Back in 2020, Pokemon Company President and CEO Sunekazu Ishihara hosted a showcase revealing a handful of new games to the masses. One of which you could say was met with a unanimous round of surprise and confusion. That game was Pokemon Unite, a game that's being developed in cooperation with Chinese developer Tencent game subsidiary Timmy Studios. Pokemon Unite will be the franchise's first leap into the world of the MOBA genre, and it releases on July 21st, 2021. So we here at IGN have made this list to get you informed and ready for the new types of battles that await. These are 7 things you need to know about Pokemon Unite. Pokemon Unite is a multiplayer online battle arena, or MOBA for short. If you've seen games such as Dota, Heroes of the Storm, or more notably League of Legends, you have somewhat of an idea of what a MOBA is. But usually cooperative, objective-based battles on maps to claim territory and outplay the opposing team. Pokemon Unite does this but has its own unique spin on the formula. There are timed 5v5 battles where Pokemon on each team go around the map and defeat the roaming NPC Pokemon and capture their Aos energy. You then run and dunk that energy into your opponent's gold points that are scattered around the map to claim points for your team. When you deposit enough energy into a goal point, it'll disappear, thus making it harder for your opponents to score. There are also specific points on the map where special Pokemon and legendaries will spawn for extra points, so be sure to coordinate with your team to get those captures. Usually in MOBA games, team composition is key, and Unite will be no exception. There are five different battle types that your favorite Pokemon could fall into, so it's important to keep that in mind when making your selection of who to bring into the battle. There are attacker types like Pikachu, Cinderace, Greninja, and Alolan Ninetales who have low endurance and excel at dealing heavy range damage to opponents. Speedsters such as Gengar, Absol, and Talonflame have high mobility and offense to excel at making quick attacks and scoring points. The all-rounder class, Charizard, Lucario, Machamp, and Garchomp have balanced offense and endurance and are highly tenacious fighters. The current available defenders are Slowbro, Snorlax, and Crustal, and they have high endurance and excel at protecting allies and hindering opponents. And lastly, but most importantly, there's the supporters Mr. Mime, Wigglytuff, and Eldegoss, who provide team support by inflicting status conditions on opponents and by healing allies. Having a well-balanced team and strong communication is key in games like these, so be sure to coordinate who is going to be using what Pokemon before the battles begin. With every Pokemon spinoff game, we get a new region or area to go along with it. Pokémon Tournament had the Ferrum region, most recently with the new Pokémon Snap we got the Lentil region, and now we're touching down in the Aos Islands for Pokémon Unite. We even have new characters in the canon. Meet Professor Forrest, who's said to be researching the world's energy with her partner Metagross. She's the genius scientist who discovered and harnessed the Aos energy used in Unite battles. We also have researcher Irby, who has researched the Aos energy with Professor Forrest. It's said that he's the one who came up with the rules for the Unite battles. It's always so impressive to see how Pokemon Company contextualizes everything that goes on in these games. On the Aos Islands, there are multiple confirmed venues in which Unite battles will take place. Each stadium also has different amounts of trainers needed per team, so you don't have to worry about always playing 5v5 all the time. First off, we have Remote Stadium, which could be considered the flagship location considering it's the one featured in the official cinematic trailer, and it's the main venue that features the game's optimal 5v5 play. This map features 5 gold points for each team, plus multiple points of interest for Pokemon to spawn in to claim plenty of experience points and Aos energy, as well as a legendary spawn area in the middle of the map. Next up is Mer Stadium, still pretty streamlined like remote, but scaled down just enough to cater to a 4v4 match. The 5 gold points are reduced to 3, and also the beach area on the bottom of the map is removed. There's still a spot for a legendary Pokemon to spawn though, so stay on your toes for those opportunities to snag big points with your team. Scaling down even further to just a 3v3 matchup, there's Aroma Park, which doesn't seem to be on a tropical island like the other stadiums, but rather a town. On this map, there are two goal zones that both teams share, but if you can score consecutive goals in a row, you gain more points. There are also conveyor belts laid across the landscape to help you strategically traverse the map in order to score or chase down opponents. And as with the other two maps, there's also a legendary spot in the middle here as well. Lastly, we have our last venue for Unite Battles, Shiver City. This map doesn't specify how many channels can battle here, but it's unique as it only has one goal point per team. Each goal you score here increases the speed in which you score the next, so it's sure to be a very frantic area to play in. Pokemon Unite will be a free-to-play game that will gradually add more content throughout its life cycle. It's already been confirmed that soon after the game's launch, there'll be new Pokemon to play as, such as Blastoise and Gardevoir. And as a launch bonus, the electric-type mythical Pokemon Zero Aura has been announced to be free to claim if you play Pokemon Unite before August 31st. But don't worry if you don't have a Switch and can't play by then, Pokemon Company has confirmed that Zero Aura will be also made available for mobile players later. You can't be going into a battle looking plain. Just as in Pokemon Sword and Shield, you're also able to customize the appearance of your trainer. Full details haven't been disclosed as of this video's recording, 
but we'd say it's safe to assume that getting cosmetics will involve some sort of in-game currency system as indicated by these three different icons on screen. It looks as if you'll be able to change your facial features such as eyes, hair, and skin tone, as well as buy full outfit sets or just individual pieces. Also, it looks like trainer cards are making a return from Sword and Shield as well with all the similar customization plus stickers. But it's not just your trainer that gets to have all the fun dressing up. You'll also be able to give your Pokemon a new look with Hollow Wear. Outfits that only seem to appear on the Pokemon and the venues of Unite Battles, but are going to make some Pokemon look the most stylish they've ever been. Players are going to have to clutch their wallets close with this game, I tell you. If you're getting excited to squad up and start doing some Unite Battles, you don't have long to wait. Pokemon Unite is coming to Nintendo Switch on July 21st and to mobile platforms in September. It's already been confirmed from Pokemon Company that cross-saved will in fact be a thing, so you'll be able to carry your battle data with you wherever you go as long as you log in with a Nintendo or Pokemon Trainer Club account. Pokemon Company might be treading new territory with Unite, but the true test will come with the longevity achieved by keeping casual players plenty entertained while also having solid rank seen for the competitive crowd. When initially presented, they've clearly shown that they've already had some interest in the online competitive scene and creating an esports space for Pokemon Unite, but only time and the passion of the players will tell at this point. But we're excited to see where this new MOBA goes. What about you? Will you be checking out the Aeos Islands and entering the battle when Pokemon Unite launches on July 21st? Comment down below and let us know what you think. And to keep up with all things gaming and Pokemon, keep it locked right here on IGN.